right, so I've just completed the gauntlet, and it's, it's, it's quite interesting, man, because, you know, I use a bit of a different team than I used last time, and I feel like this team is a lot more efficient than my previous team, so I'm gonna go over, like, the team that I use, the strategies for each fight, and just, like, try to help you get this done as efficiently as possible, so, um, I'm gonna do two guides, probably, this guide is gonna be with Hercules, because Hercules is by far the most impactful character on your team, he's gonna do so many fights for you, but there's also a lot of key like substitutes for him that I want to talk about in like a later video. So yeah, um, the team that I brought was Hercules, Apocalypse, Cable, Ghost, and Archangel. So all of these guys are rank three or below. Um, Hercules, Apocalypse, Ghost, and Cable are rank three, while Archangel is just rank two. And all overall, it's just a very straightforward time with like most Hercules fights. Um, Hercules, he just like plows through the Terax, the Vision, the Spider-Ham, the Modoc. Just like the first like lane is all about Hercules, right? The Doctor Doom, you want to use Apocalypse, who's just a very good counter for it because he is extra large. So he doesn't take any glancing damage and it's just a very straightforward time with him. Um, the Vision fight is kind of just like a nuke fest. You just go go to town, try to do as much damage as possible until you get your SP3. Um, that should be like about a revive at max. And then we have the Modoc fight here, which is, uh, you can use Hercules for it, but I do suggest using Apocalypse just because Apocalypse is immune to the Disorient, and the Disorient is probably like the most annoying thing about this Modoc because he does have stun vulnerability, but he also does have hard knock life. So there's like a bit of a trade off there. And all in all, I just feel like Apocalypse is probably the best option for that. So yeah, that should be done like in a solo at least. Um, this first lane is honestly, they're all soloable. Um, probably except for like the vision. The vision requires a lot of luck to be soloed, but now let's talk about the Spider Ham matchup because this matchup is kind of just like a free willpower fest. Like, if you just play it correctly, you'll just heal back to full health by the end of this fight. Um, just be aware whenever you do get a bar power, throw your special attack immediately because um, if you don't, then Spider Ham will try to build up Spider Nonsense and that increases his evade chance. And it just becomes like more annoying overall but if you use your special attack immediately you won't have to worry about that and it just becomes a very straightforward fight overall now let's talk about the next lane and it starts off with weapon x so weapon x is just a bit of a like it's a regular weapon x fight if you know how to fight weapon x it should be a pretty easy solo for you with hercules if you don't know how to fight him then don't be ashamed of like using a couple revives because weapon x is a bit of a hard character to fight still these days um but there really isn't anything unique with him when it comes to nodes. It is just a straightforward Weapon X fight. And then we have the Thing, which is pretty much the same exact case. Like, the Thing is, it has Osculate. That's really about it. That's the only nodes they have to worry about there. Um, you can use Cable. I used Cable originally, but then I died in, like, the last 30%. So I finished off with Hercules. They both work very fine. I think it should be a regular solo with Cable, just because it's just a parry heavy fest. Um, but if you do not have Cable and you're using someone else, Hercules just works quite fine overall. In my opinion, this is the hardest fight of the Gauntlet by far. This is the Gauntlet Korg. He has Goss Warp, he has Flux Dispersal, just every single annoying node. It is such a bad combination. There's so much block penetration. There's just like so much of like timers you have to worry about. It is just a very annoying fight. My suggestion is you just use your whole entire team. You just try to get down as much damage with like Hercules, and then you go in with Ghost, and then you go in with like Apocalypse. Apocalypse and Ghost will do the most work, and I think this can be done in about like one or two revives with each of them. I personally use like two or three revives, I think. I mainly use Ghost. Ghost is probably the best option overall, I feel like. So yeah, just be aware. If you use like 10 or something revives on this guy, do not feel ashamed at all because this guy is a very difficult fight and it requires a lot of skill if you are using ghosts and with Apocalypse, you just want to boost up as like maximum as possible, I feel like. And then a bit of a fresh air here with Dragon Man. Dragon Man is a very straightforward fight. You just counter his special two with your heavy attack and that's about it. You can even heal off of the ineptitude debuff that he inflicts on his SP1. So yeah, there's just like a lot of free healing here. And it's just a very straightforward Hercules fight. You will eventually like uh, take a lot of damage due to aspect of evolution. But like once you get past that, it's just a very straightforward fight. I think I used a ghost in Hercules tag team and didn't use a single revive for it. So yeah, very straightforward fight. Much easier than the core they had to fight previously. 
Now we have this Black Panther, and this Black Panther is a bit interesting. Um, he does have Armored Assault, so like, if you're not the best Interceptor, then this guy might be like kind of problematic for you, just because he will be unblockable for like a lot of the fight. But once you get past that, all he has is like Footloose, and Footloose isn't too bad of a node combination for him. You can just try to like burst him down with Hercules. I think I got it down in like one revive with Hercules, just because like I messed up in the beginning. But you should be able to solo with Hercules. It is a very straightforward fight. Um, just be aware that you might have to intercept a lot and you cannot really rely on parry. Now this Nightcrawler is pretty much just like an evade fest. Um, if you get lucky, you can like use Hercules, you can use whoever for it. Uh, if you have Ghost on the team, she's probably the best option for this just because she counters evade straight up. So it's just a very straightforward time and there's like much less RNG with it. But you can try to use Hercules, just try to like get lucky on the like evade procs, which I did there. And it's just a very straightforward matchup overall. There's not many to, like there's not really any issues with it. Um, and it's just a straightforward Nightcrawler, you can parry him just fine, and it's just, yeah, it's not a bad fight at all. Um, now we have the Spider Gwen though, which is a much harder matchup, because she has Window of Opportunity, so you can't really parry her, and I think she has like a higher, a higher evade chance overall, so it's just pretty annoying. This is where I suggest you use Ghost, um, Ghost is just the best option for this, because she can just counter evade so easily. It is a very boring fight though, because you just like dash back, go back in, dash back, go back in very boring but it's a very efficient fight and it should be a pretty clean solo overall so yeah uh this matchup nothing too crazy to worry about here um maybe you can like slip up a little bit but it shouldn't be too much of a difficult fight now this matchup can go very south or it can go very like good uh for me it went very good because i got lucky on like the matador procs and all that but what I did first is I just like sacrificed my whole entire team. I got her down to like 80 or 60% just because like Cable did some nice degen damage. Archangel did some work with the Neurotoxins. And it was just a pretty, it was a nice head start. And then I just finished off with Hercules. Like I go for one SP2 here and it's enough to finish her off. So it's like, if you get lucky, it is a very straightforward fight. It's probably like one of the easiest fights in the gauntlet. But if the RNG does not go your way, then it goes very, very poorly, very, very fast. So just keep that in mind that it is a bit of an RNG fest. Speaking of RNG, now we have the one Archangel fight. So yeah, this fight is pretty straightforward with Archangel. Um, just parry heavy, build up your neurotoxins, and Mojo is pretty much like done for. I think Mojo is like one of the easier fights on this gauntlet with Archangel because Archangel, you can, just, you can just like build up the poison so easily with the SP1. So yeah, it's just a very straightforward matchup and it's, I should, I would say it's a solo most times, but if you don't solo, it's fine. It's just, it's a bit RNG dependent, you know? Now this fight was quite surprising. I was like, okay, this is just an eye bomb. It should be the easiest fight of the gauntlet because like, you know, it's just a ghost cheese. And I honestly was quite wrong. I feel like this is like one of the harder fights for me just cause there is a lot going on. There is um this node where every time you dash back, you get a disorient, which is very annoying. You know, that's just like a ton of block damage. And then you get like this heal block and this power lock on you, which can be like annoying as well. So there's like a lot of debuffs coming at you. Of course, you can just use it for like free willpower healing, which I do try to utilize throughout the match. But, you know, sometimes it just like becomes too much and it's just a pretty annoying time overall. So yeah, this eye bomb, it should be a solo. Um, I, I don't think I soloed it actually. I think I did mess up in the end, but it's not too bad of a fight. It just caught me off guard a little bit. There are pretty much like no notes on this apocalypse. It is just a very straightforward fight. Um, it is just an apocalypse with like a ton of health and a ton of attack rating. So if you're not really good at dexing and special attacks like I'm not, uh, then just try to rely on Ghost, try to rely on her phase, and it should be like a straight, a pretty straightforward matchup overall. I did manage to get like the solo here, but I can understand why like you might die to block damage because you take a lot of block damage if you don't know how to dex the special attacks. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And overall, one of the easier fights in the gauntlet, in my opinion. Now, this fight is the complete opposite. This fight sucks. Um, go in with Apocalypse, do as much damage as possible until he hits the 30% mark, because then he'll start to heal, and you can't really out-damage the heal, right? So once that happens, use Archangel, heal block him, and, like prevent the healing, and then that's how you do this fight. It is a very annoying fight. The first 70% isn't too bad. It's just the part where you have to rely on Archangel was the annoying part. But if you get lucky with Archangel, then you should do it in like one revive maximum. But if it goes, if it doesn't go your way, then be prepared for a very annoying time overall. So yeah, just keep that in mind that this Sasquatch fight can be quite annoying and it is pretty problematic, I feel like. Probably the most problematic fight in the gauntlet besides Korg. This void fight is very annoying though, so pretty much you just take guaranteed damage with long distance relationship because every couple seconds you get like a weakness placed on you and that 
triggers voids, like damage over time, intimidating presence, passive. So yeah, it's just very annoying overall. And you just need to do like as much damage as possible. It is a power shield, of course, so it's like a bit easier to do damage here. So just keep that in mind that you're like probably not going to solo this fight. It, I did it in like two or three of Rise of Hercules, I believe, and that's like the best option pretty much because it is very hard to solo this guy. And it can be done in a solo, like if you get very lucky, but just expect to use a couple of revives. But it's a very straightforward matchup overall. Now, the Snake Fury is a lot easier than I expected. Um, it just has kinetic transference, and it's honestly more helpful than harmful because you just like you can just bait out your special attacks more easily. So yeah, it's just a very straightforward matchup, and there's really not much to worry about. It just it's just like a pretty big health from Snake Fury, which is like not too bad. Uh, Hercules is by far the best option in my opinion because you just like mow through him in such a fast amount of time. So yeah, very straightforward matchup. And he is the final fight before the final boss, and which, by the way, the final boss is quite a joke. Um, very straightforward matchup. You just, it's just a Hercules fest, man. There's, like, almost nothing to worry about here. Just a pretty chunky Thanos with health. Like, that's literally it. Because Hercules just, like, ignores everything else, pretty much. Very straightforward fight. You're gonna see how fast I get down this third phase here. I drop the SP2. It just does so much damage output, and then I can just go for the intercept here. I go for one more intercept, and it is that's it. That's that was the whole final phase. Very straightforward matchup, and this is probably like one of the easiest gauntlet fights there. So there is my gauntlet run recap. Now we can just go into the rewards and just like look at what I got. I'm just looking for some fun awakenings, some pretty like cool characters overall. And we open this first, and it's a mutant one to two gem, which is quite fine. A lot of good mutant champs, you know, like I still have a Toad at rank 1, I still have like a, a Weapon X at rank 1, so yeah, a lot of cool options for that. And I was like, you know what, I'll just open a couple of Shard Crystals too, because I really want Valkyrie, I like, I'm hunting the Awakening, and um, we actually, of course, don't get her, we get some more tax Taskmaster Sigs, which isn't too bad. He's a very fun character overall, so I, we, I would be down to rank him up once he's like higher Sig. He's only Sig 40 right now though, so I can't really do much with him, but... It's a it's a cool future investment, uh. But yeah, um, I'm gonna tr try to save the rest of my shards just like for the new feature crystal, just cause you know the new feature looks so hype, man. There's a Tuma, there's Spot, Spider Man Supreme, just so many awesome characters. I feel like so yeah, those two are kind of duds. Uh, the Taskmaster not too bad, but that doesn't matter because what really does matter is the Nexus crystal. And I'm like, I just want any cool new awakening, any cool new champion, you know, anything like that. And we get a Titania awakening. Now, I like Titania a lot. She is quite a fun character. She's like, has a pretty big rise, like so far in like popularity. A lot of people like her overall, which is great. I think she deserves the hype. And I cannot wait to explore this character a lot more now. So yeah, pretty awesome rewards overall. And that wraps up my gauntlet video. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the gauntlet. Um, for me, it's a pretty fun time. It wasn't too bad overall, but that's mainly because of Hercules, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's about it for me.